Welcome to Malifaux University. November 2022 Errata Update Rules In response to feedback from players, observations of how models are used, and the discovery of innovative applications of the rules, Weird regularly updates the rules in a document called the Errata. While the name implies corrections to errors, it's better to think of it as balancing the scales. This video will explain simply how the November 2022 errata changed the rules and will present them in a logical grouping which departs from the sequence of the errata document since related rules are sometimes scattered throughout the Malifaux rulebook. Another video explains the changes to the models. This will not be a strategic analysis or opinion piece on the changes and your personal insight and feedback is welcome in the comments. Some of the changes in the core rulebook were cosmetic or simple, like changing the page numbers to adjust for new content. We're not going to cover those. One new change, though, is found on page 6 and concerns upgrades. The Madness of Malifaux rules expansion included two new types of upgrade limitations, and those are now included here in the core rulebook. The first of these is the crew upgrade. This type of upgrade is attached to the entire crew as long as you have at least one model with whatever keyword is in the parentheses. It doesn't matter if any model dies or new ones are added, you can't lose this upgrade because it's attached to the player, not any particular model. Currently, the only keyword with a crew upgrade is the witness keyword belonging to Damien Ravencroft. The other new type of upgrade is the double-sided upgrade. The bygone keyword models found in Madness of Malifaux use these. Each side has a different symbol, and different actions and abilities will cause these upgrades to flip throughout the game. Only the side facing up is considered in play, but you can choose which side to start with face up unless some game effect says otherwise. One small change that will have a big impact on how Malifaux is played is on page 21. Until now, Minion, Enforcer, and Henchman models all took two actions and a bonus action on their activations, while Master models and Henchmen serving as crew leaders all took three actions and a bonus action. With the new rules, everyone gets just two actions and a bonus action. If you're playing a game of 50 Soulstones or larger, then Master models and the crew leader get a third action, but only in those larger games. Speaking of Masters, there's a new targeting restriction. Rather, there's a new definition for an existing targeting restriction. Some actions will have the italics text saying, Non-Leader Only. The new text on page 23 expands this from just the model serving as crew leader to include any master model, whether it is the crew leader or not. Expanding the definition this way keeps weird from having to update and reprint all the stat cards, but from now on, just think of Non-Leader as Non-Leader or Master. Next, we'll look at Jokers. Weird made some minor changes that clarify what have been points of debate among some players. First, the Red Joker has always had a value of 14 and any one suit of its owner's choosing. But some players may not want it to have any suit. The new text on page 7 says this is possible, saying the Red Joker has one suit or no suit of its owner's choosing. The update to the Black Joker on page 24 also makes matters more clear. Previously, the text said, when the Black Joker is in the damage flip, the damaged model suffers no damage. But what about effects that increase the damage by plus one? Does the model then suffer one damage? The new text says no. Now it says, the damaged model suffers zero damage, which cannot be modified. Zero damage matches the terminology used elsewhere in the rulebook, so this change answers the questions and fits better. Page 10 lost the paragraph about relenting, which now has its own section on page 11. In this new section, the first full paragraph is the same as the old text about relenting to a friendly opposed duel. The new paragraph allows for models to relent to simple duels generated by friendly models. This is why the Another Round shockwave on the Brewmaster, Moonshiner, and the Converging Ley Lines shockwave on Maxi Nagasi, Monomaniacal, no longer say that friendly models may choose to fail without flipping. The old rules didn't allow for relenting in a simple duel, but the new rules do. Speaking of opposed and simple duels, the focused condition also received an update. 
page 29 previously allowed for focused to add a positive modifier only to opposed duels. The errata update now says focused can be used on any duel and it still adds a positive modifier to the damage flip if there is one. Moving into terrain, several rules have been updated that should streamline and clarify gameplay. For starters, the splitting of hairs over whether a model is in terrain or nearly in terrain is over. The rules previously said that if a model's base was overlapping terrain, the model was in the terrain. But if its base were just touching the terrain, the model was within zero inches of the terrain. The new rule on page 37 states plainly that if a model's base is touching terrain, either overlapping or in base contact, that model is both in that terrain and considered within zero inches of that terrain. That goes right along with the updated rules to hazardous terrain on page 38, which clarify when the effects of the hazardous terrain take place. Before, it said the effects were felt after a model resolved an action. But now there's a list which includes moving through or into base contact with the terrain and resolving an action while in the terrain, even if that action removes the terrain. It also says the effects are resolved if the hazardous terrain marker is moved and comes into contact with a new model, but the model that is moving the marker may choose to ignore the effects of the moving marker. Let's look at a quick example. Riva Cortinas and Karis are in an encounter. Riva uses her ethereal reaping attack to kill little Iggy, who is near Karis. Riva's funeral pyre ability lets her drop a 50mm pyre marker into base contact with Iggy. Iggy drops a corpse marker to go along with it and is removed from the table. Since the rules clearly state that being in contact with terrain counts as being in the terrain, Karis is in the pyre marker dropped by Riva, but she hasn't resolved any actions, so doesn't suffer the effects yet since dropping the marker didn't count as moving it. When she activates, Karis uses her Fan the Flames tactical action on the pyre marker she's standing in. She pushes it four inches, ending it in base contact with a mourner model. Once that action is done, Karis takes burning plus one from the pyre marker that she was in. The mourner now takes burning plus one and injured plus one since Karis's third degree burns ability adds another condition for enemy models in pyre markers. Another Madness of Malifaux rule now included in the core rulebook regards special terrain. This is for unique terrain with uncommon properties detailed on a stat card. Currently, the bygone models found in Madness of Malifaux have a couple of these, but if Weird were to update the Christmas-themed Waldo terrain pieces, they would easily count as special terrain. In short, the special terrain will have either the multiple trait, which says how many of it are added at the beginning of the game during the encounter setup, or it will have the creator trait, which states which model or models can drop or create the terrain. Terrain with the creator trait cannot be added at the beginning of the game. Some special terrain will have a type, which is much like a model's keyword or characteristics, and unless it has a unique shape, special terrain will have a marker size specification as well. The rest of the text on the special terrain cards are for its effects, which are always on, like a model's abilities. When it comes to regular terrain like buildings and walls, the previous guidance about the height of that terrain said to round down to the nearest whole number. So even if a wall were 3.75 inches tall, it would count as only 3 inches in height. The new guidance for all fixed terrain is to round its height to the nearest whole number. In the case of this wall, it would now be considered height 4. As always, have these discussions with your opponent before the game begins. That leads into Malifaux math, previously on page 31 and now on page 32. As before, it says to always round fractions up to the nearest whole number, but now lists three specific exceptions. Movement is not rounded, as models can easily move half an inch. Falling damage is rounded down, not up. Determining if a model is at half a value, like its maximum health, is also not rounded. Fiona Gage has a Grit Frenzied ability that increases her damage to enemy models when she's at half her maximum health of 9 or less. Since this rule says not to round, half her maximum health is 4.5. Simply put, 
If she's at 5 health, she's above half her maximum health and doesn't get the grit bonus. If she's at 4 health, she does. Now that we've covered rounding and division, let's work on geometry. It's like we're back in school. Certain abilities, actions, and schemes refer to the area between pieces of terrain, markers, models, or any combination of them all. As many players discovered on their own, you draw a polygon from the outside of each model's base, marker, or piece of terrain to create the largest space possible. Anything within that polygon counts as the area between. All the models with this type of an effect refer to the area between the model and a marker, much like the image example now in the core rulebook. The Lugercon's Clover special scheme also uses this area between in its reveal condition. The player must have two scheme markers in the area between two previously chosen pieces of terrain. The process is the same, and the players draw lines from the outside of the terrain corners to create the largest polygon possible, just so. Since we have our sight lines out, let's talk about the updates to Line of Sight. Nothing changed so much as clarifications were made. On page 16, the second paragraph now makes it clear that models always have Line of Sight to themselves, such as might be needed for tactical actions, even while they are buried and aren't actually on the playing area. The text also now says that models also have line of sight to any object or terrain that the model is in base contact with or overlapping. Apparently, some people argued about that. On page 17, the text now states that a model on top of terrain is higher than other terrain that's the same height as what the model is standing on. Why say this? Because size zero models were a gray area. Can a model with no height be higher than anything? Yes. Yes, it can. The example illustration explains it well and should make it clear if it's not already. And with models on top of terrain, that brings us to falling and climbing. Falling and climbing were previously mentioned on page 14. Those paragraphs are now gone and expanded into their own sections on page 15. Falling previously applied any time a model space wasn't completely supported by terrain or the table, which made it impossible for a lot of models to climb on any terrain. Now, a model doesn't fall unless half its base is unsupported. So now many more models can walk on walls, crates, and other terrain pieces. Falling damage is unchanged, so when a model falls, it takes damage equal to half the distance fallen rounded down. Falling an inch does no damage. Falling two or three inches does one damage. Falling three or four inches does two damage, and so on. There shouldn't be many opportunities for your models to fall more than four inches. The rules now prevent illegal moves through falling, though. If the only place for a model to fall is on impassable terrain or another model, then the falling model must keep moving beyond that terrain or model. If the model doesn't have enough movement to get that far, then the whole movement stops before the model falls, with half of its base still on the terrain. The example image has new text to further clarify the new rules. The opposite of falling in Malifaux is climbing, and the rules for climbing are similarly updated. A model may use the walk action to move vertically up terrain with the climbable trait. The new rule specifies that a model may use back-to-back -back walk actions to move the rest of the distance up the terrain if it comes up short, or to make sure that half its base is supported by the top of the terrain. Speaking of walking, this general action also received a clarification on page 22. It used to say that walk cannot be used to leave an enemy model's engagement range. But now we have models like Marathon, Castor's Totem, with the slip-by ability that says it is never considered engaged by other models. In the old text, Marathon still wouldn't be allowed to walk away from another model's engagement range, since this isn't the agile ability that specifically says it can. The new wording of walk says it cannot be used to leave the engagement range of models engaging this model. So if there are game mechanics that override regular engagement, walk can be used to put some distance between the models. As we near the end of this errata update, players will notice some changes and updates based on gaining grounds rules have entered the core rulebook. Page 26 introduces friendly controlled and enemy controlled terms. 
page 28, explains that you're not allowed to be unfair when dropping strategy markers. And page 33 adds the rule that summoned models cannot interact or affect strategy markers in any way for the entire game. Gaining Grounds still stipulates that a model with a Summon Upgrader token cannot interact with the strategy markers, but this change to the core rules makes no reference to the Summon Upgrades. A model that was summoned, whether it still has its Summon Upgrade or not, cannot interact with the strategy markers at any time in the encounter. The strategies and schemes in the core rulebook have also been updated with some of these phrases, terms, and rules, so take the time to familiarize yourself with them. The Malifaux University videos for all these game mechanics and rules will be updated soon. Finally, we get to the most wide-reaching changes to regular gameplay, the encounter. One new step has been added, now listed as Step E, Choose Deployment. This was previously included in the step for Deploying, but now is a separate step that takes place after the scheme pool is generated and before factions and leaders are revealed. The next few steps are the same but then deployment of models and choosing schemes are now flipped. In an encounter, players will reveal their faction and leader, choose to hire additional masters or not, hire and reveal their crews, and then deploy their crews. Once all the models are on the table, both players then choose their schemes from the pool and start the game. While this seems like a semantic change, Competitive players who weigh every step of the encounter's setup process will need to adjust their methods for the new rules. Those are the rules updates from the November 2022 errata. Your feedback, opinions, and analysis are welcome in the comments. If you haven't already, join us on Patreon for early, ad-free access to all new content. And be sure to stop by the Malifaux University gift shop for the latest in Malifaux-themed shirts, hoodies, drinkware, and more. Links are in the notes below. And remember, play friendly games, keep it simple, and have fun.